I choose the design with the stepper at the rear size to have the prototype verify my theory. This is what the prototype looks like. In this episode, I detailed how I built the prototype and what I used to achieve my objectives. Hi, welcome to Slow Engineering. I'm David. Based on the last video comment, I switched the Clicky NG Pro to the PCB Clicky. This change aims to create a more compact solution by integrating surrounding parts into a single part to minimize complexity. Other parts has been refined for 3D printing to achieve better results. These modifications will be further discussed in the individual sections of the model later. To demonstrate the assembly, I will break down the tool head into several sub-assemblies, including the extruder, the pro with cooling ducts, the change mechanism, and the complete assembly. Start with the extruder. If you have already seen the previous episode, you will know I made multiple changes to make it easier to build. Once you get the printed part, it is recommended that you ensure all the holes are pre-rimmed or pre-drilled. Make the hole specific size to prevent cracking after force pushing things in. Instead of using power tools, I used reels manually to remove extra materials. Power tools will screw up the parts once you misalign your drilling. Use hand tools with drills or rimmers to follow the printed holes to ensure alignment. Start from the small diameter to the specific diameter. These actions will prevent the drills from getting stuck inside the holes and ruin your parts. Once your parts are pre-drilled, carefully assemble the shafts onto the holes. They are interference fit, so slight hammering might be required. It is a pre-assembly to check all the printed parts are well aligned. For example, I found the lever was not smoothly rotating when I assembled it. So I enlarged the diameter using the drills from 3mm to 3.2mm. After confirming that the parts were online correctly, I intended to install thread inserts according to the original design. Here's the issues. I successfully installed the inserts on the front side part, but the rear plate is too thin to accommodate a proper insert. Inserting will soften the entire corner. According to the design, removing the insert and securing the rear plate with the changing mechanism part is acceptable. Another issue arises with the extruder assembly involving the front and rear parts. An insert should be placed on the rear side and secure the two parts without obstructing the stepper at the back. However, the part deformed during heating and insertion, prompting me to modify the design by taping the hole directly. Thankfully, the solid part I'm using also makes this approach viable. The second saw assembly sequence involves the Pro and the cooling ducts. The Clicky NG Pro has been replaced with the PCB Clicky one, and the surrounding parts has been simplified. Depending on the chosen material, the Pro provides heat inserts or self-taping. For solid parts, it is better to use heat inserts. After the insertion, the assembly of the Pro is almost similar to that of the regular PCB Clicky Pro. Ensure that the magnetic polarities are opposite on each side with a compass. Then, install the magnets between the printed parts and the M2 flathead screws. 
Making two PCB boards can magnetically connect in the correct orientation. And don't forget, there is also an M2 screws at the lower part for connecting the product with a magnet. I have divided the cooling ducts into three pieces for easy printing. A Y-shaped tube with a single inlet will connect to the 7040 blower fan with a hose. And the two cooling ducts come from the separate tubes, bringing air to the nozzle. I also redesigned the pads of the Y-shaped tube to reduce turning. The shuttle and the pro mount fix the two cooling ducts in position. And the Y-shaped tube is also fixed with them by two screws passing through the parts from the back. On the other hand, I left the connection between the Y-shaped tube and the cooling ducts with the same dimensions. Therefore, you may need to grind down the connecting outer diameter until the tubes connect with a tight fit. These actions will create a better stay when the air passes through than the loosened fit, making the entire tube structure more solid when moving. To assemble the parts, pushing the rods on the cooling ducts into the side holes of the pro mount first. Then try to squeeze the Y-shaped tube to connect with the cooling ducts. Align the mounting holes on the Y-shaped tube with the pro mount and squeeze the two parts together. This finishes the sub-assembly of the pro and the cooling ducts. Move on to the next sub-assembly, which is the changing mechanism. The design is a pair of three-point fixings with two parts. One is attached to the tool head and the other is with the gantry movement. I showed two design in a previous video and pick up the stepper at the back. This design is more compact than the other one. Last time I introduced the design, I mentioned the shaft and hole fitting. Here are the pins and bushings. They have learned tolerance and need to evaluate the fitting states. I chose the F7 for the bushings. Unfortunately, the F7 bushings were not available when I placed an order. I pick up G6 bushings with the H7 pins as an alternative. Before inserting the bushings and pins, it is also essential to consider the hole size from the 3D printing. To make holes in specific size, I researched the rimmer tolerance. I found rimmers are the tools used to create holes with precise dimensions and tolerance. The rimmers I found all have an H7 tolerance meaning they can produce holes with specific dimensions within an H7 tolerance range. First, let's examine the bushing tolerance for the outer diameter. According to the data sheet, the bushings can have a P6 or M6 tolerance for the outer diameter. I opted for the M6 tolerance with an 8mm diameter ranging from 6 to 15 micrometers. Compared to the rimmer, I found that a 7.99mm rimmer can create holes with an H7 tolerance ranging from 0 to 15 micrometers. Both perform at a diameter slightly larger than 8mm. The result indicate an interference fit of 0 to 6 micrometers, meaning the bushings will be pushed into the holes with some force to fix them without causing the printing holes to crack. I have added a hole above the center bushings to assist with the rimming. 
This hole will allow the rimmers to pass through and reach the lower hole. I have also adjusted the pores to ensure they fit better together. Additionally, I have added chamfers at the end of the arms to ensure that the pins and bushings are the only fixtures in the XY plan. When examining the bushing details, you will notice small features. Bushings come with a slight chamfer on the outer diameter and serve as a guide to align with the holes. Its original purpose is to align the bushing with the hole edge before pressing. I slightly hammer the upper ones into position. However, I still use force to push the lower one in. On the other hand, the inner diameter also contains a fitter that guides the pins into the bushing. Before pressing, ensure the bushings are placed in the proper orientation. The tool head backplate has three pins to match the shuttle bushings and ensure accurate positioning. I used a 3.97 mm rimmer with an H7 tolerance to rim the pin holes. This produced holes ranging from 3.97 to 3.982 mm in diameter. The H7 pins range from 3.988 to 4 mm as a 4 mm diameter shaft. This creates an interference fit to ensure the pins inside the holes. The pin also have a chamfer serving as an alignment mark. The round side is to engage with the bushing. Please ensure that the pins are in the correct direction when installing. When I first tried to assemble the parts, I struggled to align the pins properly with the holes. I attempted to use another bushing placed at the front of the hole to align the pins before inserting them, and it failed. So I put the pins into the shuttle with the assembled bushings, then squeezed two parts together tightly to achieve initial alignment during insertion. However, the insertion wasn't deep enough to keep the pins in position, so I use a hammer to push the pins further. It's important always to check that the pins still fit with the shuttle. It takes some practice to fit them properly. However, once the pins are in position, they should fit securely, and detaching the back plate should only require an upward motion. The following steps for these two parts involve hit inserts and manex. The inserts function as expected, while the manex plays a more critical role in this process. They secure the shuttle and the backplace together during printing. I positioned the manex with opposite polarities on each side. This arrangement helps prevent neighborhooding backblades from drawing each other when multiple units are on the docks. After completing the three main sub assemblies, it's time to finish assembling the print hat. Start with the part that always moves with the gantry. Insert the shuttle between the cooling dock fixing arms and the pro mount. Use two screws to attach the Y-shaped tube to the pro mount, and tighten them using the inserts on the back side of the shuttle. There are two more screws for securing the cooling ducts with the shuttle. The sides of the shuttle are for attaching the bells. To 
to assemble the swattable tool hand. Align and use two screws with the magnet holder at the lower holes of the extruder. Then, install the hardened and hardened fan on the extruder. Ensuring that one of the screws also passes through a side of the stepper fixing. For the other screws, a spacer is needed. These spacers can be a M3 knot, but its thickness should match the stepper fixing planks. If not, use a printing spacer instead. Align the back plate with the stepper and fasten the other side of the stepper by opening the extruder lever. The lower two screws should pass through the back plate. Consider adding extra nuts between two ribs for additional grip, with the final ones placed at the end of the back plate. These two screws are crucial for tool head's stability and detachment. The remaining features, like the horizontal two-hole pattern, are for the CAN control board. Two M3 pillars will support the PCB board. And the two thread inserts at the top of the arms are for future cable management. The print head consists of two major assembly parts, a shuttle and multiple tool heads to achieve a tool changer system. The result is impressive, with no play on the XY direction but only on the straight Z axis. The manex are strong enough to hold the tool head, making the print head potentially work well in the future. What are your thoughts on the setup? What could be improved? Feel free to leave a comment to share your thoughts. If you enjoyed this DIY project, you may also be interested in other videos and projects on my channel. As always, moving forward.